All right, let's do a quick recap of Chapter 7 uh, key topics. There was, uh, you could break it into three sections. The first would be exponent rules. And here, this is the most important section from the whole chapter. And it's important to both memorize the equations and understand the shortcuts. So first, we're going to overview these three topics, and then we're going to go into each one in detail. So exponent rule is most important. Uh, that tells you how to multiply, divide, um, powers of powers, negative exponents, all that kind of stuff. Second topic was the growth and decay for exponential functions. So taking these exponent expressions and writing them as functions, graphing them, finding intercepts, looking at behavior, that kind of stuff. Um, these you're going to study a lot more in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc. So what you're trying to get here is to understand the main idea, to get a visual feel for what the graphs look like. Um, but in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc, you're going to go into a lot of detail in these functions. And finally, the third topic was geometric sequences and recursive formulas. So here, a, a geometric sequence has a common ratio, and I want you to see how that's connected to percent growth, uh, which we did a lot last semester. And recursive formulas, which we also did last semester for arithmetic sequences. Uh, so you can see how this kind of stuff is useful for banking, uh, growth of money in your bank accounts. Uh, it could also be useful for carbon dating, if you've heard of that, to see how old bones are or um, meteorite impacts or things like that. So anything with exponential growth or decay uh, half-lifes, all that kind of stuff. You're getting a taste of it now, and then you're going to see even more of it in coming math years. So let's dive into a little bit more detail for the exponent rules, because these are, like I said, the most important of all. Now there's uh, there's four to six, depending on how you look at them. Um, some of them can be combined together, but more or less, the first rule is when you multiply two things together, with the same base, so base is the same, you add the exponent. Now, if there happens to be a coefficient, you just multiply the coefficients like normal. So in the equation that I give you, I had coefficients as well. So you add the exponents, you keep the base the same, and you multiply the coefficients. If you have a power of a power, okay, then you multiply the two powers together, and you can always do this by writing it out the long way if you're ever not sure. Okay. If you have a monomial with multiple uh, factors inside parentheses, all raised to a power, then you can distribute that power in to each factor of the monomial. Now be very careful. If this is a binomial or a trinomial or anything other than a monomial, then you should not distribute the power and You can only distribute it in. Uh, if it's a fraction, that's okay. But if it's adding or subtracting inside, then you cannot distribute it in. Okay, a quotient, when you have um, two bases of the same base divided by each other, you can subtract the bottom power from the top power. Again, with quotients, this is the one where I like to think of it as a battle, combat. Uh, so if you have a certain number of, of soldiers on one side and a certain number of soldiers on the other side, which side is going to win and how much will they win by? A and then you can write that as a to the m minus n, or if the denominator is larger power than the numerator, you can actually just say the answer is 1 over and then however many are left over on the bottom, some amount there. Okay, Power of a quotient. So uh, this is the same thing as the power of a product. You can distribute the exponent in to the numerator and the denominator, no problem there, as long as it's a single term without any adding and subtracting. Uh, anything to the zero power is going to equal one, as long as the part inside itself is not a zero. So anything except zero to the zero power is one. And finally, negative exponents. If you have a negative exponent, there's you can you can write it in two different ways. Flip it from the numerator to the denominator. And if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, just flip it up to the numerator. So negative exponent just means flip it to the other side. In terms of that combat or battling of soldiers, it means basically I think of negative as like a spy, right? You've got a to the negative something or other in the denominator. That means you have a spy who's gonna cross enemy lines and he's really a soldier uh, that belongs in the numerator. So if he comes back to his own side, he's he's normal there, a to the n, just like that. Um, again, if you have coefficients in front of these, the coefficient does not move with the variable, it stays where it is. So if you had five x to the negative three, Okay, the 5, it actually has its own exponent, and its exponent is a 1, which is a positive number. So the 5 to the first power stays in the numerator, but the x to the negative 3, that's on the wrong side because a negative power means divide. So you write that properly, x to the third in the denominator. So that's, cl that's clutch. Now I want to say one more thing about all these exponent rules. I'm not going to do a bunch of examples in this video. However, I've made a lot of other videos in last year and the previous year that has numerous exponent rule examples. And so I encourage you to check those out. I might even assign them. 
Uh, they've got lots of worked out problems that combines all the rules together for you. Okay, moving along with our new chapter 7 uh, review. There was exponential growth in decay and then the general exponential formula. So a general exponential function has a coefficient and then a base raised to some power. If that base is larger than 1, we call it exponential growth. And we can show that by writing in here. Instead of writing b for base, we can write 1 plus r. Because the r is the rate of growth, or the rate of change, the percent increase, expressed as a decimal. So if you have like a 5% increase, then this would be 1.05. Uh, remember, this is just like what we were doing in the past with percent change, okay? Only now we can have a t up here, which is the number of times it's happened. So if you have exponential growth and you wait five cycles, you grow by 5%, you get an answer. Then you do it again and again and again and again. Each time you increase the exponent by one, you multiply by that ratio one more time, which takes you another step into the future and increases the amount that you have. Uh, if the b value is between 0 and 1. That means each time you multiply, you're multiplying by a number smaller than 1 here. So this number is smaller than 1. When you multiply anything by a number smaller than 1, your value is going to decrease, okay? So you're, it's called exponential decay. Decay means basically getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The amount that you have is decreasing over time. So this, this might be modeled by, for example, um, the value of your car, right? The price gets cut in half every year that you own it until eventually it's worth nothing at all. Something like that. Car might not be a perfect example, but the, the amount that you have is decreasing over time. Radioactive decay is another one you might have heard of. Um, carbon dating is done by looking at um, the decay of, of carbon in a sample, etc., etc. So growth and decay for exponential functions, be able to find values. And remember, the best way to solve these kind of problems is to list your variables. So write down, A, my starting value equals something r, my rate, equals something, t, my amount of time, equals something. Um, and in, in here I didn't put this equation, but there is also one for compounding interest, if you recall, right? Compound interest. So um, that includes an n, which is the number of times it's compounded. So you put a little multiply by n, and then you have a little r over n like that. And so that was just a slight variation. Um, of this formula. So this formula really is actually the same. If n equals 1, then this doesn't really matter at all, and you just recover this normal exponential growth formula. All right, last section here. Geometric sequences and recursive. So geometric sequences, these have a common ratio, right? So to get from one term to the next, you multiply by a certain number. If that number is larger than 1, okay, then your sequence is getting larger and larger and larger, which would be correlated to exponential growth. If your geometric sequence has a common ratio between 0 and 1, then you're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So in this here, the ratio is 1 plus r. So we call r, r we typically call the rate of growth, which is the percent increase or decrease. Okay, And 1 plus or minus the rate of growth, we call the ratio. It's the number that you're multiplying by over and over and over and over, t number of times. So you have a common ratio, um, and you can use recursive formulas. So you write a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 multiplied by that common ratio. Just write it out, ratio. Okay, so the next term is the previous term multiplied by whatever that common ratio was. And you can connect these back, of course, to our geometric sequences. Um, a sub n, oh, geometric, sorry, this is geometric. And then you have also arithmetic. You can write a sub n equals a sub n minus 1. That's your previous term, plus the c common difference. And then we also could write it a sub n equals a 1 plus n minus 1 times t, right? So this is one step forward from the previous term. And this is n minus 1 steps forward from uh, the nth term. So. Uh, two different ways to write it. And that pretty much wraps up chapter 7. Um, like I said, we'll check out the other videos to see more examples of exponential problems solved. Um, but that's it.